Good evening and happy Monday. Welcome back to another reading vlog. Apologies for not uploading one last week. I started filming it on Wednesday, but then I ended up picking up so many extra hours last week that filming just got away from me and I didn't end up getting enough footage for a weekly vlog. I'll pop in here whatever footage I did manage to get just so you can kind of be up to date on my reading habits and then we'll talk about today. Happy Wednesday and welcome back to a reading vlog. Today is the first day that I am starting this vlog. Right, why am I starting this on a Wednesday instead of a Monday? Genuinely kind of forgot that I had a reading vlog to film. <laughs> I'm also still in the process of editing last week's reading vlog because time just got away from me this week. Um, I meant to edit it over the weekend, didn't get around to it, so I'm just exporting it now and then it should be going live tonight. I am very tired today. Um, I was only meant to work my normal half day today, but then I got asked to stay later. So I'm tired, I'm already ready for bed and it's not even 7 p.m. I am currently reading Cooper by Jackie James. It is the third book in her Blue Collar Daddy series. I had no idea this series existed and I posted on a Facebook group that I'm a part of asking for everyone's feel good romance recommendations because I have a few on my TBR, but none of them were really speaking to me. And someone recommended book one in this series, which is Ryder. And- Should I send your message? You are not sending that message to anyone. No one needs to know that I'm reading daddy romances. Except YouTube. Yeah, so someone recommended book one, and as soon as I read the blurb, I was like this. It's probably not gonna be a five star read, I can already tell, but I knew that I was going to love it. It was a feel good, which was exactly what I wanted, and now I'm on book three. <laughs> so I don't actually know how many books are in this series. I'm assuming at least four, because we're following this group of friends. They are all daddies, they met because of that part of their lifestyle and then all became friends and it's great. So book one follows Ryder and Brennan, which is very cute, absolutely loved it. These are all daddy romances, by the way, if I hadn't made that clear. This is very different from the other two so far because both Brennan and Ben in books one and two are such sweet boys, which is what their daddies were looking for. But Lucas is very different and that he likes a challenge and he wants a bratty boy. He wants a boy who is gonna give him a hard time. And Gavin is exactly that. I'm not gonna lie, he kind of annoyed me a little bit because he does have a very solid no fucks given attitude. But while Lucas thinks it comes from the fact that his family has money, it just comes from the fact that he has been neglected like his whole life. And so that attitude is just a result of the barriers that he has built around himself. I think the only negative thing that I could say about this series so far is that there never really seems to be any definitive moments where I feel pivotal moments in their relationship should be defined are not being defined. I don't think that made sense because I kind of forgot what I was saying halfway through my sentence, but let's clear that up a little bit. I just, I feel like at no point in any of these three books so far have these characters actually said, we are going to try a relationship. And I feel like that's kind of how things should be going, but instead like they meet and they're like, yeah, cool, there's something here. And then it just kind of segues into a relationship and there's not always it's kind of like we skip from a to g you know we're, we're missing that maybe the little bit of a conversation that should be happening in the middle there and it's not such a striking contrast when you're reading it you're kind of like okay we're cruising but then some part of your brain goes oh i feel like i'm missing something or like when they say and I'm not going to say in which book, but when two of our characters said, I love you for the first time, I feel like that is a pivotal moment in your relationship. The first time you say, I love you, I feel like there's normally kind of a scene about that. Like, oh my God, I'm in love with this person. Or, holy crap, I just told this person I was in love with them. We got nothing. They said, I love you. And it was just kind of cool. We're moseying on as if this was just any other regular old chapter no conversation whatsoever. I do wish I'd started vlogging this yesterday though because I got to a point in this book where I was just, 
feeling so many emotions that I honestly just flopped on the floor and I was like starfish face down on the carpet for like a solid five minutes while I was trying to comprehend what I would just read in a good way like I was really happy about it and I was so happy to keep reading but I remember lying there thinking this is the kind of stuff that I should be filming like people need to know that this is what happens when you get so invested in a book that you literally just can't do anything other than lie there and process. So at the moment, I am reading Work For It by Talia Hibbert. And if you think that that author sounds familiar, it probably does because she wrote the Get A Life Chloe Brown books. So I'd heard of Talia Hibbert before, of course. I haven't read any of her books though, so I have no idea what her writing style is like. Well, I do now. I am 51% of the way through this book, and to be honest, I'm still not really sure how I feel about it. It's one of those books where I feel like the story actually reads rather different from what the blurb leads you to believe the book is about. So this is the blurb. Between men like us, trust doesn't come easy. In this village, I'm an outcast. Griffin Everett, the scowling giant who prefers plants to people. Then I meet Keynes, a stranger from the city who's everything I'm not. Sharp-tongued, sophisticated, beautiful, free. For a few precious moments in a dark alleyway, he's also mine. Hot and sweet under the stars until he crushes me like dirt beneath his designer boot. When the prettiest man I've ever hated shows up at my job the next day, I'm not sure if I want to strangle him or drag him into bed. Actually, I think I want both. But Keynes isn't here for the likes of me. He makes that painfully clear. With everyone else at work, he's all gorgeous, glittering charm. But when I get too close, he turns vicious. And yet I can't stay away, because there's something about this Ice King that sets me on fire. A secret vulnerability that makes my chest ache. I'll do whatever it takes to sneak past his walls and see the real man again. The last thing I expect is for that man to ruin me. So I don't really know what I was picturing, but it's not what we got. Like, for some reason I was picturing an office setting, even though the blurb does mention a farmer, but apparently I didn't read that part before I started this. But I was picturing an office setting and you've got two of our main characters and Olu with everyone else is all charming and flirty and witty and then he gets to Griff and there's like this tension and they're just enemies. They hate each other. But I find that in the book itself, that's not exactly the case. Like, of course, they're not in an office setting. They're on a farm. Olu hasn't exactly been cruel to Griffin. Like, there have been moments, of course, where he has been hurtful to protect himself. But I don't know. It's just different than what I expected. Afternoon and happy Tuesday. I have to get ready for Taekwondo very shortly and by very shortly I mean now but we're going to film this clip anyway. I think I had this thought at work yesterday. I was like the way that I should do this because I have a very bad habit of getting so absorbed in the book that I forget to update you about anything until I'm done. So I had the thought I'm like maybe I should update you at like 20, 40, 60, 80 percent like just little updates here and there to let you know how it's going. So while I remember, we are 60% of the way through the book, well, 63, to be technical, because that's where the chapter ended. And I'm still not too sure how I feel about it, but I definitely know that I'm enjoying it more than I was in the beginning. I think it just had a very slow introduction. I didn't really know what I was getting into, and just the way that first chapter was worded from Olu's point of view just really threw me off. I have no idea why, but... I knew that it was just like a small town romance. I knew that's all it was. But the way that he was talking about himself like being so alien and disconnected from his emotions, I was like, wait, have I actually genuinely somehow stumbled in to a fantasy MM romance and I haven't realized it? Anyway, 63%. This book is definitely a slow burn. We didn't actually have any kind of intimacy between our two characters until this chapter or the previous one, which is completely understandable because we do address not directly, kind of indirectly, the fact that Olu seems to have depression and anxiety. And so getting him to a point where he was comfortable enough with Griff, he was actually feeling things 
that he was meant to be feeling. He wasn't feeling disgusted by himself. He wasn't ashamed of himself. So getting him to that point where he trusts Griff enough to open up to him was an adventure. It was a journey, but here we are. I don't really know what else to add. Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. I'm here as promised for my 80% reading update. I actually hit this point just before I had to leave for work, so I didn't have time to film anything. I have decided that I'm really enjoying this book. I don't know what it was about those first couple of chapters that threw me so much. I am definitely enjoying this book. Just putting that out there. This last chapter though, oh my gosh. No spoilers, this is completely spoiler free, but we know, as I mentioned I think yesterday, that Olu does suffer from depression and anxiety. He is on antidepressants, it is mentioned in the book. As a result of that, as well as something that um, a previous partner has put him through, Olu really just struggles to believe that anyone could actually love him as a person and he struggles to believe that he is someone deserving of someone else's love, namely Griff's. But like even one of our characters when she's like, oh, you know, I'm going to miss you when you go. He was surprised and he's like, wait, really? His confidence in himself and like in his character is just so low and I just want to give him a solid hug. I am going to get into a little bit of a spoiler section now though because I'm really excited about the chapter that just happened and I want to talk about it. So chapter 15, like these past couple of chapters, Griff and Olu have both been toying with the fact that they know that Olu is going to be going back home. Like he only ever came to Fernley for a little bit of a holiday. He was never going to stay permanently. Him and Griff both screwed up because they've developed feelings for one another. And I feel like for the past chapter or so, Griff has really been toying with the fact as to whether or not he should actually tell Olu how he feels. And he's like, look, he's never going to know if I don't tell him. And so this last chapter, he came out and he was like, I love you. I want you to stay. And Olu's just thinking, I can't stay. Like, I can't. And Mentally, he's thinking, I can't stay here because eventually Griff is going to realize everything that's wrong with me and he's not going to love me anymore. He's going to resent me and I don't think I can put my heart through that. If he had said that to Griff, Griff would have said that's total bullshit. Like, I love you for you. Like, stop it. But then when Olu just says, I can't, like, I can't stay. He has a life to get back to back in London. And Griff's kind of like, of course you can't stay. I have to go with you. <laughs> and we have read from Griff's point of view, we know that he has realized how unhappy he is in Fernley. Like he wouldn't really be leaving anything behind. His mum is dead. His best friend is moving away. And everyone in this town treats him like a bloody pariah. And he has done nothing to deserve that. He is an absolute sweetheart. And so he's like, I will come with you to London. Like, just tell me that's okay. But that kind of sets Olu into a little bit of a downward spiral because he's thinking he would literally give up everything for me. Come with me to London, sit in my sterile, non-personal, impersonal, whatever, apartment, and slowly wilt day by day. And he would come to resent Olu. Olu just can't handle that. And so when Griff's like, I'll come with you, Olu says, I don't want you to. And that was the end of the chapter and I had to go to work after that. Are you joking me? Okay, next update will be at the conclusion of the book. I'll see you there. Oh no, he's gone. Shit, my heart rate just immediately increased. Okay, I'm finished with this book. I actually finished it a couple of hours ago, but I just needed some time to let it sit and actually think about what thoughts I had on this book. I think I'm umming and ahhing between whether I would give it a 3.5 or a 4 because I definitely really enjoyed it, but as you saw, it did take me a lot of time to really sink into the story. Not quite sure why, whether I had, you know, some misconceptions going into it. Who really knows? But I did come to really enjoy this book. There was so much character development in here on both sides. Both of our main characters really took the time to figure out who they were and they helped each other get there and that was so beautiful and so sweet to read about. You've got Griff who has always been treated as a bit of an outcast in Fernley coming to realize that he deserves better and he deserves so much more and it's thanks to Olu that he's finally realized that. And then there's Olu who thinks that after everything that went down with his ex that 
he is something to be ashamed of and he is not something to be loved and with Griff's help and you know his own character he has come to realize that no one can take away the actual essence of who he is and I love that for both of our main characters, truly. So A plus on character development, as well as the intimacy between these two characters, it was honestly stunning. The development, I feel like I'm saying that word a lot, but honestly, Talia Hibbert started here, ended up up here, honestly. Like both of our characters started a little bit broken and they finished more than whole. I don't really know what I wanna read next though. I'm falling into one of those ruts where nothing just sounds appealing to me.